Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a new video. So we're going to be installing the new rotors and new pads on the STI. Uh, I have 32,000 miles on these. Uh, the rotors don't necessarily need to be replaced, but the pads are definitely on their way out. The fronts are definitely a lot lower. The rears have a little bit more meat, uh, but I figure I was just going to do pads, but I always wanted to do these rotors, which are the DBA 4000 series, the T3s. I uh, always wanted to do them. They look really nice. Um, I always want to try them out, so I figured I might as well just do a whole entire kind of brake upgrade, refresh. I'm going to also be doing a full brake flush as well, putting new, better fluid into the car as well. Uh, but I'm actually going to be doing that next weekend with a buddy of mine. Tonight, I'm actually just going to be doing the rotors and pads. I'm going to do the bedding process, um, you know, in another video. Uh, but I'll show you the process of what it takes to actually put new rotors and pads onto a car and kind of just do a full refresh. Uh, mine is a 2017, so I do not have the upgraded 2018 plus brakes, which are really nice, which are the six piston up fronts. Uh, these are just the four and the two pistons, uh, but they're also very nice. But I am really looking forward to doing a full refresh on these. A couple videos ago, I also did the pairing brake master cylinder brace in the engine bay, which helped a little bit. Not a huge improvement, but definitely noticeable on the harder braking. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to doing all the all the rotors and the pads and everything like that. So I've got the car up on ramps. I'm going to jack up one side, do one side, do the other. Um, I'm going to knock this one out first, and then I'll record the other one just so, you know, make sure all the process goes smoothly and everything and there's no issues. Something to look out for on these, especially uh, the bolts that are actually holding on the caliper, they are known to strip. So you got to be very, very careful. Um, I don't think I'm going to really have any issues. At least I hope not. My car only has 32,000 miles. Um, and I, you know, I baby the car, I keep it clean and everything. I mean, obviously it's dirty right now, but you know, I really don't drive it in the snow and salt and everything. So at least I try not to, uh, so I, I should be okay, but obviously I will report any issues that I do come across, uh, but let's get started. I'm going to jack the car up, get the wheel off and, uh, I'm going to start on this side. I'll catch back up with you guys once I'm on the passenger side, starting on that one. Once I get this one done, just so I can get a feel for it and, uh, you know, get this going. So one second. All right, guys, we are back. It's about an hour and a half or so later. Uh, I ended up just doing the entire driver's side because I wanted to make sure I, you know, everything was okay with the front and the rear. Um, so I ended up installing, like I said, the front, the front driver's side and also the rear driver's side. Everything went very smoothly. So I'm confident that, you know, when I go, now I'm going to go on the passenger side and actually show you guys exactly, you know, the process and what you need to do. Um, and I just wanted to go over it and make sure the bolts weren't seized, make sure it wasn't hard to get off and I just didn't have to do any crazy extra work. Um, and thankfully everything came out very smoothly, went very well. The first one took me the longest, that mainly took uh, about an hour or so. This one took only like 20 minutes. I just wanted to make sure I was doing everything correctly. I wasn't breaking any bolts. I wasn't rushing anything. Obviously they're brakes. You do not want to rush this. <laughs> so, um, you know, everything went very smoothly for both sides. So now we're going to jump over to the passenger side. We are going to start with the front passenger side for you guys. Um, the big one, the fun one, the heavier one. <laughs> um, and then we'll move to the back obviously. And then, uh, we'll kind of wrap it up. I'm going to do a separate video on the bedding process just so there is a separate video so I can show you exactly what you need to do. But this video is just solely going to be, you know, how you install new rotors and pads on an STI. All right, guys. So got the wheel off. This is what we're looking at. First thing I need to do, obviously, uh, I'm running three millimeter spacers on my car. So I'm going to take off that three millimeter spacer. I have anti-seize on it. As you can tell, it came right off. If you didn't use that and they were on a while, you have a really hard time. So make sure you use anti-seize. I'm going to put more anti-seize on the new rotors once I get them on. Uh, but that's one of the last steps uh, but that just shows how easy it came off if you use anti seize so the first thing that i usually do is actually take out the pads so once you take off the caliper it's it's kind of hard to you know hold and everything it's heavy um, so it's easier to do it while it's still bolted up to the car plus when you actually go to take the caliper off uh, it leaves it, it slips off a little easier if you keep the pads on it's harder to shimmy off um, so that is the first thing that we're going to do okay so here we're on the back of the caliper you can see these sort of see there's two little silver pins right there one and two uh, what those actually are doing they're actually holding this pin in um, so it's just kind of like a safety precaution so they don't pop out so all you need to do is get under it first so that's what you need to do just get a needle nose pop it out put it somewhere safe because if you lose those you're gonna have a bad time same thing with this side So now that we got that done, the next step is we're going to actually want to push the pins that are going across the top of the pads here. 
uh, out. So you can see the little pin right there and right there. Uh, so what we're going to use, this is just an Allen screwdriver, I believe a T25. It ends up working perfectly. If you have a punch, uh, you can do that as well, but I just found this to work really well. So I'm just gonna put that on the pin, hammer it in a little bit, and just be really careful you don't miss and hit the caliper. And then what I ended up doing is actually take a very skinny screwdriver and push it all the way through. All right, so now the pins are ready to come out. These are a little tough to get out. Uh, so I recommend I end up using some vice grips. Um, so we're just gonna grip onto the pins. Just be careful that metal clip is gonna fling out. This is the bracket that holds the pads in place as well as the pins. So that just pops right out. Same thing for this pin on top. Just gonna slide that out. All right, so now that we got the pins out, we're going to want to take the pads out. So we're going to push from the bottom. We have access to the pad. Kind of just maneuver them out. It's going to be a little tight because the pistons are compressed. All right, so we got the front pad out. As you can see, definitely worn. Uh, I'll show you in comparison to a new one, uh, but these are definitely low. They definitely have some meat left. Um, you know, I can definitely get some more miles out of them, but it's just not worth it. They started to squeal a little bit um, and you know, brake pads aren't really that expensive. So I figure might as well do it. So now let's get the back one out. It's probably gonna be a little bit harder. Ugh. There we go, got the back side out. Very similar pad life. Uh, there is some meat left, but it definitely is low and definitely needed to be replaced. You also wanna make sure the shims on the uh, OEM pads do come out with it. Because with your new pads, most likely they're going to come. The ones I have, they have shims already on the back of the um, on the pads. I'll show you that as well. But you want to make sure those come out. Usually they will. Usually they're stuck to the actual pad on the back. So um, you probably won't have any issues. But make sure you check for that. Okay, so now that we got the pads out and the caliper is ready to come off, there are two 19 millimeter bolts in the back. So as you can see in the back, we got one 19 millimeter bolt there. And if you go under, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. And right there as well, another 19 millimeter bolt. These are very well known to actually strip. Uh, and by strip, I mean it's actually meant to, uh, the thread in the caliper is known to break off and get stuck in there. So you wanna be super careful about this. Um, what I do is I absolutely blast the crap out of it with some WD-40 or PB blaster or whatever you may have. So I'm just going to spray it down. Now I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. You don't want to use an impact gun. You don't want to use anything crazy. All you want to do is use a basic ratchet with a 19 millimeter. Um, and then you just kind of like bang on it just to break it loose. Once it's broken loose, it'll come off very easily. Um, but you just, you don't want to force it. You don't want to sit there and use crazy, you know, power tools or anything. Um, Cause that is, it's just going to strip right out, especially if it seized a little bit. Uh, I only have 32,000 miles on these. And you know, like I said, I don't really drive in the snow and salt too much. It should come off easy. The other side did come off very easily. So I'm going to go ahead and wait a little bit. I'll probably soak them again uh, just to make sure. Uh, and then we're going to break them loose. So the time has come. <laughs> this is the scariest part. Uh, because like I said, if you strip these you're pretty screwed, you're going to have to get a, I believe it's called a heli, heli coil. Um, and basically retap the actual threads. And I don't want to do that. Going to the top one, you're going to need an extension if you're using a ratchet, uh, just because it's you're not going to be able to get to it. So all you're going to want to do is just kind of bang on it. Um, like I said, you don't want to sit there and you know tug on it really, really hard because you're going to have some issues. So this side's a little bit more difficult because uh, I got to pull up. On the driver's side, you push down, so it's a little bit easier to get to, uh, or just easier to put pressure on it. Uh, this one's a little bit harder, so I'm going to use my longer ratchet, just so I can get a better angle. So, whew, I end up using a little bit shorter extension to get to it. The longer one, just I wasn't able to get the leverage, uh, but 
We got both of them undone. Which is a good thing. So now I'm just going to Now I'm just going to take them off using a normal ratchet. Once they're loose, you should be able to just you know, you undo them with your hand. There's one bolt and the top bolt. So now the caliper is free. Uh, a lot of people, what they end up doing now is either just hanging it or they try to balance it on the control arm. The best thing that I found to do is get a short bungee like this uh, and just kind of loop it through the caliper. and just hang it on to your suspension, your coil, your spring, or whatever it is that you have on the car. So now it just hangs there safely and you're able to get the rotor off. Our next step is we need to get this rotor off, but odds are you're not gonna be able to get it off with your hands. One trick, so you'll see two little threaded inserts here. Um, I ended up just finding some uh, bolts around the garage that fit. You're gonna screw them in and tighten them down. What it's actually going to do is as you screw them in and tighten them, it's gonna push against the hub and it's gonna pop the rotor loose. Um, so otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get these off. So it's a really nice little trick, I guess. Once it gets tight enough, you'll hear a little pop. That's the rotor releasing. What I do is I kind of go back and forth just so there's even pressure. So you heard the pop right there. That's the rotor releasing from the hub. I heard it again there. So I usually just tighten them all the way down just to make sure that it's completely off the hub. Now we're just going to take them back out. And your rotor should come loose. So there you go. There's the OEM rotor off the car. So now basically we're ready to throw the new stuff on. But before I do that, what I like to do is kind of just clean everything up because um, you're really not behind here too often. So all I'm gonna do is just spray some all-purpose cleaner that you have. Doesn't really matter what you have, just some degreaser or something. <coughs> Don't breathe it in. <laughs> and just spray it down like crazy. Then I get a crappy brush that I have and kind of just clean everything up. You know, because you're not behind here very often, so you might as well get all the debris and brake dust and everything that's been sitting behind here and accumulating over the past 32,000 miles. Oof, this stuff stinks. All right, so it's clean. I'm just going to take a towel, wipe everything down just to get all the grease off and brake dust. Last thing I'm going to do is actually just take a uh, wire brush, clean the hubs up a little bit, get the rust off. Just so, like I said, you're not going to be behind here. And plus, you want a good contact point on the new rotor. So you don't want it sitting there and wobbling. So there we go. The hub, everything is ready for the new DBA rotor and the Hawk pads to go on. But what we're going to do now is actually going to uh, run over to the workbench and I'm going to compare the OEM rotor compared to the uh, the DBA rotor as well as the OEM pad to the Hawk pad. Just so you can see the differences and what I'm talking about, uh, how much nicer the DBA rotors are. I did a whole review on it, um, so you can go back and check that video. So we're looking at the new and the old. <laughs> Obviously the first noticeable difference is you're going to see the actual slots compared to this. That is the only physical difference. Obviously the hub's a little bit nicer, they're painted. Uh, you know, they have a protective finish on it as opposed to these, which I believe are just, you know, there's no finish on it. It's just like actual metal. The stock rotors are, they're definitely nice rotors. There's no question about it. Um, they got some nice ventilation and everything, but you know, these have kind of hard to show on camera, uh, but they do have a little bit of a lip, whereas opposed to these, you know, no lip at all. Um, you look on the back of these, much better ventilation. They have the signature kangaroo paw ventilation system in there um, that is pretty cool looking. It does a really good job of cooling the brakes off and, and keeping the heat out. Um, so that is definitely going to help. Not necessarily in my case because I drive this car on the street, but if you were tracking the car, these will definitely be a much better solution um, for the track. Here is the stock Brembo pads and these are the Hawk Street 5.0 pads. Not much meat. 
lots of meat. <laughs> uh, but obviously, the, one of the differences that you see is actually two. There's two contact points. One of the reasons why the split is actually down the middle is it allows uh, any debris or anything that builds up in the pad to escape as opposed to sitting uh, on the pad, getting on the rotor, and just you know decreasing your brake quality. Um, so having these two contact points helps with that. It also helps for much better even wear. Now these, I had 32,000 miles on them. They still do have some life left as I explained, uh, but this is what a, you know, a brand new pad looks like in terms of the actual height. So you can see the kind of difference there a little bit better. So let's go ahead and install the DBA rotor and the Hawk pad on the STI. And we can put the OEMs aside, you know, save them for a rainy day if I ever need to. Um, or, you know, maybe I'll end up selling them or something if somebody needs them badly. But uh, I'll have them as spares just in case. So let's go ahead, get these installed and finish this up. One of the things that you want to try to do is not touch the, the you know, the actual rotor surface. I am going to wipe everything down with IPA when I'm done. But it's good practice to just, you know, keep your hands and dirt away from the rotor as much as possible just so um, you know it doesn't get all dirty and everything and it'll be much easier to clean but as you can see on the car <laughs> pretty straightforward these are floating rotors or anything they don't get bolted down the calipers actually keep them in place so that's how you install rotors so it's very very simple you know brakes are actually extremely easy to do if you've never done it before it can be intimidating uh, but I promise you it's very uh, it's literally two bolts and a couple pins to take the pads out the rotors literally just slide right off. There's no screws or bolts or anything like that. So super simple. Don't be intimidated by this. It's, it's a really fun install. Um, and I suggest uh, you save yourself a couple hundred bucks uh, and do this yourself. So now we're going to actually install the caliper onto the bracket on the back. Uh, so the rotor stays in place. Then we're gonna throw the pads in and we'll be done. Let's take the caliper off our little contraption here. We're going to slip it in its spot, get one of the caliper bolts, so now what we're actually going to do next is get the pads in, uh, so what we're going to do is lube up the back uh, of the pad right here of shim, you get some grease, so you're just going to squeeze them on the back, this should give you two packets. I like to go a little bit extra. So you don't need to go too crazy with this. I've seen people, uh, you know, cover the whole pad with this, you know, on the back of it like crazy. You really only need the lube on the contact points where the piston hits. Um, but I just like to cover the whole shim just in case. What this actually does is it keeps things quiet, no squeaking or squealing or anything like that. So. You don't want to skip this step. It's very important. Otherwise, you're going to hate the pads and say the pads stink when in reality you just didn't put this on. So, so that's what it's going to look like. You know, you just want to have a nice even coverage. One thing you're going to want to do prior to putting the pad in is you want to make sure the piston is compressed. Um, you can use a piston spreader. You can use a C-clamp. Uh, what I do is actually just take some two spanner wrenches, cover them with a microfiber, and put it in and just push it in. Um, you can probably do it by hand as well, but I just prefer to do it that way. Um, so one thing to note is one side is going to have a little metal clip. That side goes on the front um, of your caliper. So now just going to slide it in. There we go. Now we're going to get the back pad and do the same thing. Put some grease or lube on there. One thing you want to note is you do not want to get this on the actual pad. If you get it on the pad, you're not going to have a good time. You just want to put it on the shim back here where uh, the piston actually touches the pad. All right, so we got the pads in. Had a little trouble with the pistons, but I uh, ended up removing the cap on the brake reservoir and it relieved some pressure and I was able to get them in safely. So I didn't put the pins or anything in yet. I just want to tighten the caliper uh, just to make sure that is done. Now the foot pounds, I, I heard was around 80 foot pounds, 80 or 88. Um, it's impossible to get a torque wrench in here. I'm just gonna use my impact. I'm not gonna go crazy, um, but I just wanted to kind of hand tighten them with this at first. And then take my impact and uh, drill home.
All right, so now we're gonna finish up the pads. What we're gonna do is gonna take your bracket, put it into place as you slip the first pin in. All right, so we got the top pin in, now we're going to slip the bottom one in. You wanna make sure when you put the pins back in that they're peeking through on this side. Um, and then we're going to take our little safety clips, pop them in the holes, we'll be done. Last but not least, I'm gonna take some IPA, wipe down the rotors, make sure any fingerprints or debris or anything like that. You can also use brake cleaner. Uh, I just don't have any on hand. IPA is more than sufficient. Basically, you want something that's gonna dissolve. You don't wanna leave, you don't wanna have something that's gonna leave a, uh, you know, like a finish on here because it's just gonna get on the pad and it's gonna make it not perform well, probably will squeak and squeal, so. Pads in, new rotors on, everything is cleaned up, looking good. Uh, so all I'm gonna do is throw the spacer back on with some more anti-seize, put the wheel back on, and then we're gonna jump to the uh, passenger rear. That seems to be, the rears are definitely easier. I can do them in about 20 minutes. This take about 45 minutes. Uh, just because it's a larger caliper and everything and there's four pistons to move around. Definitely had a little bit more meat on the back like I said but definitely ready to be replaced. These rear bolts are actually a 17 millimeter. The fronts are 19, so a little bit smaller. So for the rear, you want to make sure your e-brake is off because the e-brake is inside here, the shoes, and it's pushing up on the rotor. So that's one reason why uh, I may not come loose. So make sure you have that off. Once you take the rotor off, there's a little cap right here. You just want to take that off. You're going to transfer that over to your new rotor. Same deal. Got to clean everything out. So we are done. Now I'm just going to you know, clean everything up here, uh, get the wheel back on. It's actually two, <laughs> two, almost 2.30 in the morning. So I'm not gonna start my car right now and move it. Uh, just you know, me being a conscious, good neighbor. Uh, I don't wanna annoy anybody at 2.30 in the morning because this car is very loud. So just gotta get the wheels back on. The Outback is gonna spend the night outside, which is no big deal. Um, we're actually selling that car very soon anyway. So. Uh, but let me get the wheel on. Let's get the car on the ground. And uh, I'll probably wrap this video up tomorrow morning because I am freaking beat. All right, guys. So we're about two days later now. <laughs> it's taken me that long to recoup just from getting to bed so late. Uh, plus Thanksgiving was yesterday. So, you know, we're busy with the family and all that. But rotors are done. I've been editing the video and I realized I forgot to say two things. One thing is that the rotors are actually unidirectional. So it doesn't matter if you're going on either side. Uh, you know, with a lot of slotted rotors, you know, it's, it's, you could only have it on one side. Uh, but with the uh, DBA rotors, you can, they're unidirectional, so you can put it on the driver's side or passenger side. So it doesn't matter about that. One thing that I didn't film on video that I thought I got a clip of was actually putting the shim um, back from the OEM pads onto the new ones. So before you put the pads on, you just want to slide that shim in uh, on either side uh, of the, of the caliper, and then you'd be good to go. But, um, but yeah, really happy with the install. Went really smoothly. Obviously it took some time, but uh, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. It looks really good. I actually haven't driven on them yet, um, but so I'm definitely gonna report back 
uh, once I get some uh, miles on them and give a review and everything and what I think. Uh, but I'm going to go out today and do a full um, bedding process, so I'll record that for anybody that is interested. Uh, but yeah, for the actual install, that is it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, be sure to ask them below. But in the meantime, keep it clean, keep it simple, and I'll catch you in the next one.